Hello and welcome back. I'm your friendly neighborhood technician. Today, what we have here, diesel. Going to show you how to remove the intake manifolds and basically do an oil cooler seal job. So let's get to it. So on this one, what happened was there is a coolant hose that goes to the back of the driver's side uh, intake manifold and the little nipple that that sticks out the back of the intake manifold came out so it needs a new intake manifold on the driver's side and since doing that job you have to take out both sides of the um the intake manifold to do it properly you basically get down to doing the oil cooler the only difference the only thing you don't do when doing what i'm going to do right now is itself remove the oil cooler so um i'm going to show you how to do that and um if we're lucky i'll actually uh, replace the oil cooler seals and you'll get to see how to do that as well so the first thing you want to do is drain the coolant and on this one since the hose came out of the back of the intake manifold the, it drained its own coolant so you can see right here no coolant so but what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to lift it up and I'm going to uh, drain the coolant anyway. I'm going to, I'm going to um, undo the drain on the bottom of the radiator and drain the coolant anyway so we can uh, make sure all the coolant is out because when if you take out the oil cooler, you don't want any of the oil and the coolant mixing. So as you can see right here, it does have some additional oil leaks. There are other leaks in other places. I think the oil filter housing is also leaking, So, um, but we're not going to address that today. So what you want to do is you're going to remo want to remove this front under panel and this rear under panel right here. And while you're at it, you probably want to remove the rear under panel also. It's not necessary, but um, it might make things a little bit easier, especially if you have to do cleanup like that. You're going to have to remove that anyway just to clean that panel off. But it's just a bunch of these eight millimeter screws right here. There's a bunch of them all around there. This one has eight of them. I believe this one has 10 of them. All right, so there is the drain for the radiator, and I attached this long hose right there just so it doesn't get uh, coolant all over the other panels, the fender liner, and just get stuff everywhere. Whereas this, you get that long hose, and you can drain it into a bucket, and it keeps everything nice and clean. And then to drain, you're going to want to get some pliers or something up here to turn this counterclockwise until the coolant starts coming out. eventually. Ooh, there's a little dribble. Coolant should not be green, by the way. It's not the factory color for this vehicle. If you are vertically challenged like myself, I do recommend taking off the front wheels if your jack stand slash lift situation uh, makes it possible. And then you can lower the front of the vehicle down as much as possible because it does make the make getting over the front of this vehicle a lot easier because there is a lot of reaching over the front of the vehicle uh, during this repair. Now we're gonna wanna take off the engine cover. And the engine cover is just pressed in by four grommets and you're going to want to lift up on this. There are some clips right here. So if you pry outward slightly, this does come up just like that. And then you can remove this accordion piece. And also you can see right here, these little tabs and you just have to pry up from right there. And then you can remove this section as well. I'm going to have to talk over the music that some of the other guys got playing over here. Now what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to remove that cover right there and you're going to want to remove that cover right there uh, because there are some panels under here that you're going to want to remove. You can see that one right there that's uh, a bit chewed up. You're going to want to remove that one also because it's going to make getting everything out of here a lot easier. Now getting these two panels out, you could pry it up uh, and um, pull up on it a little bit, but it is tucked under here so the easiest thing to do is just remove this piece right here this just pushed on that way so if you just pull it off like that and then these panels just lift up and come out now some of the older models like the 164 this is a 166 but the 164 chassis actually has a sway bar or a uh, strut brace that goes over the top you're going to want to have to you're going to want to remove that uh, 
also so but this one doesn't have it but so uh, but if you do you're gonna want to re uh, remove that it's gonna have two bolts on each side over here then two bolts over there as well as you can see back here this is the tube that came out of the back of the intake manifold now when doing this job there are a lot of parts that get replaced and I'm not going to go over each individual single different part number. If you're interested in what part numbers are going to get replaced, um, if you look up the diesel recall where the intake manifolds get replaced, it's all of those. Next, you're going to want to remove the intake ducts from the left and the right. You got this one on the, on the passenger side, this one on the driver's side. It just unclips from right here, so if you lift this up, just like this you get a pocket screwdriver or something in here and then it just pops up like that then you can remove it and then you can just pull it it just pulls out down there from the air filter next we're going to remove the windshield wiper arms and we're going to remove the linkage and everything back there so to remove the wiper arms you have these little caps here these just pop off and they have some 16 millimeter uh, bolts or nuts right there and same thing over here more 16 millimeter and there's one right there now when removing wiper arms even though you take off the nut this still binds there this is spline down down there so uh, what happens is you can lift it up like that and you can still it's still stuck on there so what you want to do is you want to be very careful when trying to remove this because you don't want to damage the windshield back here so you can use a tool they have tools that you can uh, pop this off with or if you hold it right here keep your hand between the windshield and the wiper arm then you can push and rock up and down and then it comes off but keep your hand right here between your hand and the windshield so you don't damn you don't hit the windshield with this because once this touches the windshield your windshield's done for and then repeat the process for the other wiper arm next you're going to want to remove the cowling you're going to have three t25s you have a t25 here a t25 there and then you got a t25 right there and then when you take that off you can take this little drain tube off that drains from the center of the cowling straight down here to this tube once those T25s are out, you can lift up on this. The windshield cowling should press into a channel that's on the bottom of the windshield. So, uh, so you might have to pop it out a little bit. You can see right here on this side that it is right there in the middle. It does pop out some, just like that. So just do that all along. And then when you are going back in, that just presses back in there. Next, you're gonna to wanna to pop off this intake duct for the AC system. And it's got three little clips. It's got a clip, clip, clip. And it just comes right out. Also, if you're wondering, there's your pre-dust filter uh, for the AC system. And next you're gonna wanna remove these braces. These look like they're E14s. So you're gonna have one here, one there, and then two over there on that side. Next, you have three E12s. You have an E12 here, an E12 here, and then there's an E12 over there in that corner. There should be a 10 millimeter bolt right there, but sometime in this vehicle's life, it seems to have gone missing. Next, you're gonna wanna unclip the windshield connector right there. You don't have to disconnect it, you just gotta unclip it from the linkage. And then when you get this linkage lifted out, you can see it's loose. You're gonna wanna unplug that connector and then you can remove the entire linkage. Next, you're going to want to remove this piece right here. Also, there's a piece right here that was already removed, but there's only, there's one bolt right here. Actually, yeah, there's a, a 10 millimeter that goes right here, and then a 10 millimeter that goes right there, and then it clips into that piece right there. So on this side, there's a 10 millimeter here. This one that goes right there has already been taken out. So once you take out these two, this again just lifts right out. Sorry, I misspoke. Those are eight millimeters, not 10 millimeters. Next, we're gonna remove the center section right here. And you can look down here. You can see there's gonna be a T20 right there, a T25 right there on that side. And then there's gonna be another one that should be right there on that side. Next, you're gonna have a couple eight or 10 millimeter bolts, they go right there, basically down here, you can barely see it. There's one right there, that's a 10. So you're gonna have one there and then one there, you're gonna have to remove. Then once you get those 10s out, it pulls right out. 
Okay, next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take out the air filters and the mass airflow sensor unit right there. Mass airflow sensor there, mass airflow sensor there. One for the left side, one for the right side. So, actually, right side, left side, if that makes sense. Because how Mercedes does it is as you're sitting in the vehicle, not as you're looking at it from the front. So, that's always the left, that's always the right. And to take these out, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the air filter housings out, right here on the left and the right, and you're gonna take off this sensor, this connector right here, should un there it is there's a little tab and then it just unclips and then you're going to unclip it right here do you're going to do this on this on both sides there's a clip here you swing that out of the way and then a clip here swing that out of the way and there's going to be two E10s there's an E10 right there and then there's an E10 right there in the back and then this whole housing comes up now that this is loose this will actually separate from there and then same thing over here you're going to want to take that out there's no sensor like that. There's no sensor on this side, by the way. So again, E10, there's one right there. And then there's an E10 straight down right there. At least there should be. Now you're gonna wanna get a flathead and loosen up this clamp right here. Or a seven millimeter should work also, if you can, if you have a seven millimeter. Then what you can do is you can take these air filter housings if you don't want to remo remove them quite yet and push them that way and that'll get them out of the way just like that. And then you can actually remove your mass airflow sensor unit. You want to remove this connector over here. Just pop the, pop the lock out, push it down, pull it out. And then on this side, the lock is on the bottom. At least it should be. And then you're going to want to pinch it and remove it. And then this intake, this tube right here, this heater for the crankcase ventilation right there, this just pushes in. There's a grommet there that goes, and that just pushes outwards. And then you can see that right there. This, or you can see it down here actually. That gets pushed outwards, and then you can pull it off. Now, a bit of a note, you're gonna wanna remove and replace this seal, this orange seal right here that goes into the turbo every time you remove it because that thing can get pinched and that thing can um, come loose if you do not replace it and just reuse it and it can get sucked into the turbo and it will destroy your turbo. And here's the inlet for the turbo. Always check your turbo for extra play. This thing seems pretty good. Spins free. Doesn't jiggle at all. Now to remove these, they're just held in by grommets. You can see I already, I've already taken off, oops. I've already taken off this side over here. And you can see down there, there's a grommet. And then down there, there's a grommet also. So to uh, get it out, you just basically lift up, pull up like that. And it just comes straight out. Next, what you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to remove this clip right here from this upper coolant hose. Here's your thermostat right there. And once you remove this clip, you can take out the coolant hose and you're gonna to wanna to tuck this somewhere out of the way. Next, you're gonna to wanna to remove this plastic vacuum line right here. It goes snakes all the way over here and connects right there. You pinch that connector together, then you can remove it that way. And there should be a second tab right here, but heat and time, things get brittle and you can see that second tab right there. So you just need to pinch those in and then pull it off. And then you just pull this rubber hose that goes to this vacuum actuator right there. Next, you're gonna to wanna to remove this coolant line right here that goes down here across the radiator to this T that goes over to the coolant reservoir. And you're gonna to wanna to remove this hose clamp right here. And then you're just gonna tuck it out of the way because you're not gonna disconnect it from the radiator. I don't enjoy disconnecting things from the radiator when I don't have to, because over, like I said, over time, things get brittle. If you breathe on that wrong, it will break off. So if you just disconnect the coolant hose over here, just pull that out of the way, then Pull that and then it unclips and then unclips and then you can pull this and tuck it out of the way and just work with that dangling right there. 
Next, we're gonna remove this charge pipe right here with all the bumps on it. Now, to do that, we're gonna have to loosen up this noise silencer right there. There's an E10 right there. You're gonna have to remove this E10. And then also, there's an E10 way down there pointed sideways. At least there should be. And uh, I noticed that some of the bolts on here are missing. I will be replacing all these missing bolts because um, that's how I work. I'm not gonna leave missing bolts um, where there should be bolts. So I'm going to make sure this thing it goes back together perfect. So on this thing right here, there's an E10 right there. And then um, sometimes on some vehicles, this is actually a T30. So sometimes it's a T30. And then sometimes when you have the vehicle that doesn't have these bumps, like the older models, the engine cover actually attaches right here. So it's gonna be, um, it's gonna be a, uh, a basically, I think it's an E12, but it's gonna be tall. It's gonna be like that, about that tall because the engine cover grommet pops into the top of it. But this one doesn't have that, uh, it just has this E10 right there. So now that all the bolts are removed, this thing just moves out of the way. This thing you can just literally push down. That seal gets replaced also. That thing can just dangle like that. And then this just pulls up like that and out from the turbo. And there's gonna be a green seal right there. A little note about seals and gaskets. When you have a job this big, I do recommend replacing every single seal and gasket that you touch. Every single seal and gasket that dis gets disconnected, I highly recommend replacing because you don't wanna get, do a job this far and then get that far into it and then you didn't replace a seal and it leaks. And then you gotta take the entire thing back apart. Next, we're gonna take off the heat shield for the turbo. It's just three E10s, there's one there, there's one there, and then there's one over here on that side. <clears throat> Next, what I wanna do is disconnect this right here, and we're gonna take this hose and we're gonna tuck it out of the way because we don't actually have to remove that entire hose. So if you pop this lock off right here, just like that, and then disconnect it. and then you can just tuck it over out of the way. Be gentle because this um, oil leak line is what they call it. It's basically the fuel return line that comes over here back to the, uh, the fuel rail, uh, or the fuel, these are the fuel rails right here. Uh, that's actually just a fuel line to the filter. Uh, so you don't, you don't wanna put too much tension on those because those also can become brittle over time and you don't wanna damage or break those because that part right there, I'm not sure how much it costs, but it does take quite a bit of effort to replace. You can, as you can see, um, about the, going this far to replace it, but you also have to remove this fuel rail because it goes underneath it. You can see down there um, that it does go underneath that fuel rail right there, and then it comes snakes all the way down that side. Next, we're gonna remove this mixing chamber right here is what they call it. Um, well, actually, we're gonna pull it out and then we're gonna lower it. We're not actually gonna remove the entire thing, um, but um, so we're gonna leave it attached to the charge hose right there and um, we're just gonna pull it out and lower it down just kind of like we did to that right there just to get it out of our way. So we gotta remove this noise silencer and then we have to remove here right here is your glow plug control unit. Yeah, this is what supplies power to the glow plugs. You can see this fat power cord right here, the power wire, this is a single wire. Um, that, and then there's another connector back there. This is what supplies power to all six of your glow plugs. So we're gonna remove that, which has to remove this bracket. There's a bolt right here, bolt right there, and then there. All three of these bolts are different. This one's different, that one's different, that one. This one actually has an, a 10 millimeter nut on the bottom of it that um, gets that gets held in place. And then um, this right here has a 10, E10 right there. There's another E10 right there. Sometimes there's a dipstick tube right here that has an E10 also. Um, the dipstick is over here. It used to be over here in the on the earlier models. And so that bolt is not there. So on the earlier models, you can see this nut right here. You can see that right there, or this bolt, sorry. This bolt right here. Uh, the earlier models did have a nut. And this right here, the, the 166 actually has this bracket for the vacuum actuator that is threaded, that gets, um, this gets threaded onto. Then for the glow plug control unit, you can just disconnect that connector, disconnect this connector, and it comes right out. Next, there's gonna be two small E10s right here. There's one right here and one right there. Don't forget to replace that gasket or don't forget to actually use that gasket if you're going back together with this. 
and you're not gonna actually remove this entire tube right here. It is just being held in here with an O-ring. So don't, all you have to do is take these out and just leave it alone. Cause when you remove this, when you pull this out, that's gonna come with it. Okay, down here, Here's your throttle body right there, by the way. Um, oh, down here, there are some quite difficult to see E10s. There's two of them. You can see there's one, or there's the head of one right, Let's see if I can get it right down there. And it's going to, there's going to be a bracket that this actually fits in that's shaped like a C that goes this way. So when this goes on, it goes into the C like that. There's a bolt here on the top of it, and then down on the bottom, on the other side of that C, there's another bolt. So you're going to have to remove those two. Um, next All right next we're gonna remove these bolts right here. There's two right here This top one holds this fuel line bracket. You can see right there. This top one does also there's two You see right here from the top that bolt and that bolt right there And then you can see down here. There's another bolt right here And then there's one right here some the early early ones have another bolt that goes about here Somewhere like that, but this one doesn't have it. So you're gonna remove these four bolts next Next, you're gonna to wanna to remove this bolt right here. That is a T30, by the way. It should be an E10, and an E10 is gonna go back there. Should be a really short E10. Should be only about that long. Next, we're gonna remove the fuel filter um, because this bracket right here for this fuel line goes underneath here, and it is actually for this side of the fuel filter right there. This one goes right here to this piece. So we're gonna remove this clamp, remove this clamp, and then we're gonna remove this connector right there and then also we're going to remove uh, loosen up this five millimeter allen right there we're not going to remove it just going to loosen it up so i actually have pliers that work really really well the best pliers i've ever found that work with work with them and they're made by this brand right here there you can see right there i call them my fockham pliers because that's the word that's on them fockham so you can see there's two different ways. There's right here, there's a flat side, and then there is a notch side. And you can actually see there's a notch side right there, and then on this side, there's a notch as well. So one side removes, one side installs. So you can see this little bit right there, that little nub, to, you know, or to remove it, you're gonna wanna get the notch inside that, kind of like this. So you got the notch right, notch right there. You're gonna want that notch just like this. So when you get it in there and you squeeze, it pops it up like that and then you can loosen that now to get it on you need the reverse and then when we go back on i'll show you why actually you know what i can show you right now to get it on what happens is you can see the bevel on these the pliers right there if it'll focus on the notch side is pretty steep and then you got the the bevel on this side which is um pretty sh it's, it's really deep uh, so what happens is um when you do notch it like this having let's see if i can get your picture of it Having it like this gives you the room for that, those teeth of that clamp to go back over. So when you get it in there, when you get in there like that, it has room. You can see how far away the clamp is from the, the actual notch where it fits and it goes just like that. And then again, you take it apart. It pops back up, comes off just like that. Now you want to remove these hoses. Now, if you give these hoses too much motivation, they will tear and then you're going to have to replace the hose. Also replace those hose clamps. Those are in the work instructions. Then you're going to want to pull this out and then you can kind of wiggle it in. Just remember the routing. It's not difficult to remember the routing. It just kind of goes in there and you just got to finagle it out. So with your five millimeter in the back of there loosened and with this loosened and that loosened remember don't remove just loosen with all that loose what you can do is you can just pull the fuel filter straight up and out if this hose will get out of the way Just like that. Now there is a method to my madness. There is a reason why I left that bracket in there. There are so many different ways to take these intake manifolds out. Um, there's the work instruction way that you can do where you take them out in uh, one at a time, or there's also a way that you can take them out in one complete unit. Now 
on this per, uh, sp specific project, um, it's not going to matter because I do have to replace one side anyway. So I will have to disassemble it once it is actually taken out of the vehicle. Um, but one way you can take it out is leaving that bracket in there. You can tighten, you're going to need to get this fuel line out, by the way. But um, when you tighten this, this fuel, bra fuel filter bracket in there, um, you can actually um, use that as a, as a support to keep both halves together to aid in removal. Now, basically, this is how I do fuel filters on this. I don't take that out. I don't take that bracket out. Um, so what happens, loosening these two brackets right there, those two bolts right there, will allow that to spread once you loosen that. And that helps you get the fuel filter straight up and out. Next, I'm going to remove that oxygen sensor right there. And you can use any number of oxygen sensor sockets um, or 22 millimeter works also. Now, in some ways, the old model was easier to work on uh, because next we got to get that elbow back there off the back of the turbo. Now, the old model did have a brake point right here that you could unbolt. It had an exhaust clamp on it and it was about that long right there. Maybe a tiny bit longer. Some of them, uh, I think the E-classes um, actually uh, incorporated the cat right there also um, or one of the cats right there also you could, that you could remove. This one is uh, that you can see that accordion section right there is a part of the entire exhaust that goes all the way down there. So that's all one piece. So I'm going to have to remove that bolt and that one right there and then um, this gets pushed back and then we can remove the bolts for the um, for the turbo to the exhaust manifolds, which are down there. Now, a little note about this job. Here are nine bolts. These are the exhaust bolts. These go to the back of the turbo and the turbo to the exhaust manifold. The problem is we have two different bolts here. So one thing I always do, because uh, this is, if this goes wrong, this can be a huge mistake and can probably set your car on fire. So uh, what you want to do is you want to take the bolt, you're going to get this handful of, handful of bolts. These bolts you're going to want to replace also. These are the new ones. Um, and then what I always do, just, just in case, even though I can see them, I can see it with, with, with my eye, I still set them aside because three of these bolts go to the back of the turbo, which are shorter. And then six of them go to the exhaust manifolds, three on each side. So you have this one right here that goes to the exhaust manifold. And then this one right here that goes to the back of the turbo. And you can see there's a length difference. Now, if you put this in the back of the turbo, the uh, that elbow back there is not going to seat properly. And you will have a massive exhaust leak right there. And there's a lot of sound deadening material right there that if heated enough can cause a fire. So you want to make sure you do not mix these bolts up. So you're going to want to set that one aside and then this one goes here. Then that one goes back there. That one goes back there. This one goes with oops, that. And then all three of these go there. These right here and never the two shall meet. So getting these bolts out of the back here are gonna require a uh, different combination of uh, extensions. Um, so I'll use, I usually have a one inch extension that I will get the top right here with and then that one over there. And then the bottom one that is basically, there's two in the top across from each other and then there's one in the bottom in the middle that you don't have to completely remove. But on this one, I will remove it just to, so you can push this straight back. The bottom of this is notched so you can set it in the back of the turbo, but I'm gonna remove that bottom bolt anyway. Um, but the bottom one, you're going to need basically a three inch extension um, on that E12 is what that's going to be. And then you can get that bottom one out. Okay, now to get this off, it seems pretty solid on there, right? Uh, all the bolts are taken out and everything. So what I do is I put my palm in my hand right here and I gave a good push down. And it basically, what, what's holding it in there is all the rubber gaskets and everything that have basically sealed themselves to the aluminum of the intake manifold. So if you push down, kind of breaks it loose and then you can pop it loose like that and then you just gotta wiggle it and it pops straight out. And now there is another, uh, basically where this goes in there, um, there's an O-ring in there that might give you, actually that's not gonna give you an issue because you got this right here, but this one right here might give you some trouble because it's an, like I said, a rubber O-ring inside this middle tube. It can be a little difficult to remove. Next, we're gonna remove the lifting bracket for the engine. You can see right there, there's the eye for it. We're gonna remove that. It's just a couple of E10s right there and on the other side of that. 
Now we're gonna work on getting this turbo out of here. So, all the way back here, first thing we wanna do is there's a little EGR tube. You can see right there. We're gonna remove that. Then there's those two E10s that you can see facing to the left, actually about 10 o'clock. And there's that bracket right there, or that uh, clamp down there. That clamp actually has a small E10 on the back side of that. So you just have to get a little ratchet around there and remove that. And then um, in there, there's gonna be a seal that you're gonna wanna replace. Also, there's gonna be a seal for that right there as well for the other end. And um, so we're gonna remove that. I do wanna recommend getting some zip ties and yanking this bracket up towards this uh, bracket right here that's still attached to the firewall. Uh, then it gives you a lot easier access to the bolts right there for the turbo to the exhaust manifolds. Now, right now, I do wanna recommend um, more like implore you to use some of your favorite um, WD-40, PB Blaster, or whatever um, penetrating li liquid that you prefer and hose those bolts down because it will help you out quite a bit. Now we're gonna remove those six bolts. I like to come in from the opposite side, so I'm gonna come in with a uh, ratchet and an extension going that way for this one, and then the opposite way coming this way for the other one. Now the next two bolts are gonna, you're gonna need a long extension. This extension is about 10 inches, and it has an E12 at the end. There are two bolts straight down back here. Now right here, there's some more bolts here, but there's two straight down here. And I'm gonna show you where, here's one of them. You can find basically going straight down the back. And right there. There's one right there. And then there's one straight down here. There's a bracket at the bottom of the turbo in the back uh, that you have to remove these two bolts for. Uh, don't remove the bolts that are going that are facing this way. Actually, they're facing the, towards the rear of the car. Don't remove those. Uh, these two going straight down. Okay, so a quick note on getting those two bolts out there. Um, if any of you guys have worked on Mercedes long enough, you know what dum dum is, and you know that if you come across it, you save it. So I have quite a collection of it here. It really helps with getting bolts when you have to get bolts straight down or bolts that are you have to get in at an angle like that. It really helps to keep them stuck or get, keep them stick, sticking inside the socket. So right now I'm gonna put some dum-dum in the end of this E12. So when I go down there on that bolt and I get it loose, I can just pull it straight up. Okay, to show you what I'm talking about, it's loose. Right there. All right, next there's gonna be two more bolts straight down. You can see one of them right there. My phone will focus right there. And that's gonna be a T40 or a T45. And then there's another one straight down there behind that coolant tube right there. Now, another side note, on the older versions, there was a bracket that goes from these two bolts right here down to the intake port shutoff actuator right there. It goes right here, these two bolts, and then it also goes right here. So there, on the other ones, the other versions, there is a hole tapped right here, and there is a bracket that goes like that, and then straight down right there. But this one doesn't have it, so we don't have to remove it on this one. Now you can see, turbo's loose and almost ready to come out. You will have to unstick that O-ring right down there at the end of that tube. You're gonna have to unstick that because that can get uh, pretty tight in there, especially with the heat and the rubber against the metal. As, so when you put a new O-ring on there, you're gonna wanna lube it up just so uh, it'll go in a lot easier. You don't have to remove it, right? Here, this right here, you can if you want, but you don't have to. That's just another O-ring you're gonna have to remove later or replace later. So then you're gonna have to remove this connector and then you're gonna have to uh, loosen up that line and then you're ready to come up and out. You're just gonna have to wiggle it out and it'll come right out. And then one more connector you're gonna have to remove. This is a temperature sensor. You're gonna have to remove this connector right here before you pull it out. And there we are, no turbo. Here's the turbo right here amongst a pile of other parts. Looks like a turbo. Next, we're going to remove the oil connection fitting. You can see it right there. 
or it's called the pedal stool, something like that. There's four bolts in the bottom of it. They're E12s, and then that entire thing comes out. It's just a big chunk of cast iron. Okay, the next part I'm going to do a little bit different than the work instructions. Work instructions say to take out this fuel rail right there, but I'm going to take out this fuel rail right here. And I do that because when you you have to you have to get this harness out of the way and when i do move the harness out of the way i fold it over and to the driver's side right about here and then i hold it in place with a bungee cord um so if you only take out the driver's side fuel rail you can't really do that and this just makes getting the intake manifolds out a lot easier so right now we're going to take out the center fuel line right here so we got to take out that bolt right there that e10 that e10 and then we're going to loosen this right here and loosen it over here on this side next to the coolant temp sensor which is right there next we're going to remove this connector right here that just unclips and then pulls off then we're going to take out this e10 this e10 but before we do that we're going to loosen up all of the three of these fuel lines and then we can actually remove this fuel rail. Okay, now that we have all of those things disconnected, you got that line loose, these three fuel lines loose, these connected. Now, you can work this out of here, but it is a lot easier if you loosen up these fuel lines right here, which are just some more 17s, I believe they're right there. These, This side is an 18, but this side is a 17. There's a 17 there, 17 here, and then a 17 right here. But I do want to uh, give you a word of caution. Those fuel, the fuel injectors that they're attached to are uh, plastic right around that, uh, right around the hex there, and they are really easy to break. So they do make a very specific uh, socket for it, or I actually have a, um, a, a wrench that I made. It's a 17 that has a notch cut out of the boxed end and I use that to, to disconnect those. Also, when you're doing that, what you wanna be careful of is uh, you wanna disconnect the fuel return, the leak oil line right here, and then, um, but when you remove that, what's gonna happen is uh, you're gonna have the nipple for that sticking out still, and you don't wanna break that off. So, um, you just be very careful when trying to disconnect anything from these fuel injectors because it is really easy to slip and uh, damage those fuel injectors, and those fuel injectors are not cheap. Okay, what you're gonna do to disconnect the fuel return slash leak oil line right here. Some of these, the older version, have a little collar that you pull up on. These, this style right here, this has two tabs right here, right here and right here, and you just twist it like that. Twist it like that, then do that for each one, and then for that one. Then you can actually pull up on it. Try not to pull right here because if this line is brittle, that will just snap off and then you gotta replace that. So if you work on it a little bit, it pops off. And you are you are gonna wanna replace these O-rings also. So you just keep working your way down. Like that. And you are gonna get a little bit of fuel. So just like that. And this will need to get folded over this way also. So as you can see, that's sticking out and it is still kind of in the way of that uh, 17 right there. All right, so here is that socket, part number 00058968030. And as you can tell, this is the shape of it right there. So when you're getting in here just like this, fits like that, then you can put a half inch right here and you can turn this without damaging the plastic around here or that nipple sticking out. Okay, as we crank it, you can see how it avoids the plastic of the injector and that nipple right there. Now with these lines loose, you can see how much easier it is to get the fuel rail out. That's it. All right, next we're gonna remove all the connectors on this side. So you got some connectors over here that we're gonna have to remove because we gotta take this entire harness off of this side and then it's going to get folded over so you're going to have to disconnect all these glow plug connectors and all the fuel injector connectors and the cam position sensor right here and then you're going to have to um, disconnect the uh, diesel particulate filter differential pressure sensor and you're probably going to have to 
remove this thing also, and that's gonna get need to get pulled around. So I'm gonna do that. Now, if you break or happen to break your glow plug connector, such as that one right there, see this one is broken right there, those connectors are available separate. So you can just get that little plastic cover, just like that, there it is. And if you can see the part number on there, 0445457928. And these are not very expensive. So if you do break one or all six of them, you can replace just this piece separate. Okay, next you're gonna wanna take out that E10 right there. You're gonna wanna disconnect the connector for the intake port shutoff actuator. And then you're gonna wanna disconnect this connector right here for the intake port shutoff actuator position sensor. And then, um, it's loose. Some of these do have another uh, bolt or another E10 right about here. Actually, it might be over in this area. This one does not. So um, you can see that the harness over here is rather loose now. And then now we can work on getting it folded over. Before we get it folded over, we're going to dis need to disconnect this ground right here, which is attached to the connector right here for your fuel pump, uh, for your fuel filter. So we need to disconnect that. Then we need to disconnect this lifting eye right here. We need to remove that, which does has a, have a bolt there, and it has a bolt there because behind there is another connector for another glow plug. And then we're going to need to disconnect the glow plug right here, the glow plug right here your coolant temp sensor, and the other intake port shutoff actuator position sensor right here. We're gonna need to disconnect that also. Next, you wanna take out this right here. This is also part of the leak oil line or the fuel return line. You're gonna to wanna to remove this little clip like that, and then this pops right out just like this. And there's another O-ring on here you're gonna to wanna to replace. And then once all that is done, then we can start to fold the harness all the way over. Now this is going to come all the way over here, basically like that. So now you have almost nothing covering the intake manifolds. And then we're going to put a bungee cord around here and we're going to hold it over here, right about there. There we go, just like that. Now you have pretty much complete freedom to take out the intake manifold now. Now, what I do want to recommend, because you are going to need to be getting in here like that, is I do want to recommend putting some rags over this harness because that thing can get quite oily. And if you don't want your arms all covered in oil, just throw some rags over that. Alrighty, so almost ready to take all the bolts out, but you want to take out that hose right there that's attached to the EGR valve and you want to disconnect the EGR valve. Now, normally, if this was still sticking out of the back of the intake manifold, you would have to remove, disconnect that hose, but I don't have to because it's came out. That's why we're replacing the intake manifold. So we're gonna disconnect those and then we'll get to the removal procedure. Okay, now we're almost there again, but you're gonna wanna take off these two bolts right here because you have to get to that bolt right there. Um, and then uh, once we do that, I'll show you how to take out both of these intake manifolds in one go while keeping this connection right down there together. Okay, now we're gonna take out this bolt, this one, this one, and then there's gonna be a bolt down right there. And then the bolts across this part of the intake manifold right there, right there. There's gonna be two bolts right here, as well as the two bolts on the back side of that one, and then across the top of the intake manifold right there. And then these two right here, leave the intake port shutoff actuator in there. And then there's one bolt you gotta take out from the thermostat and it's going to be this bottom bolt down here. It's kind of hard to see right there. Don't take out the top ones or don't take out the thermostat. Only this one right here is the one we're gonna need, need to remove. Okay, now that all the bolts are out, what you're gonna to wanna to do is if you have some bolts that are the correct thread, you're gonna to wanna to put bolts in these four holes right here. And then you're gonna to wanna to take some zip ties and you're gonna to wanna to tie these together with some zip ties and then tie these together with some zip ties. And as you snug them down, the intake manifold halves are going to come in just slightly a little, just a little bit. And then um, I'll show you another place right here. You're gonna to wanna to get some more zip ties around this part of the intake manifold, around this outlet, this outlet, not the thermostat. You're gonna to wanna to get all the way down and underneath the inlet and the outlet for the EGR cooler. And you're gonna to wanna to zip tie 
all those together. You're probably gonna have to, unless you have really long zip ties, you're gonna wanna zip, uh, put two zip ties together to get around that, and then you're gonna wanna cinch that all the way closed as tight as you can, which is gonna keep that connection right there, which is where the intake pipe socket goes right there, which is a uh, gasket. It's a little tube with two O-rings on it, and it's notorious for getting crooked and getting in there sideways and you have to take this all the way back apart if you can't get in there correctly. So whenever possible, I do not remove it. And um, when you zip tie it all together like that, you're gonna, and when we replace this, we're gonna get the new one on this side, then we're gonna re-zip tie everything back together, including the front of this, so we can keep that connection right there secure. All right, so you're gonna look something like this. You're gonna have those wrapped around there like that. So you're gonna pull in that. See, now, now those two gaps, the gap is touching and then you're gonna be able to lift up right here and you're gonna kind of lift it out the back. You wanna get the, this lifted up and you're gonna kind of tilt it forward and bring it out like that. There we have it, intake manifolds out. There's your oil cooler right there. And this thing looks like it's been, these oil coolers were replaced not that long ago. Um, but I am gonna recommend replacing those whenever you get this out because those do take, uh, take a dump and they can leak without warning so i do recommend highly recommend no matter how whenever you're in here to replace the oil cooler seals i have not gotten these approved yet so i cannot replace those right now but there are only 10 bolts actually this is one of the gaskets right here for that and when you clean out in here i do want to um, point out be careful with these three holes right here this one leads straight into the engine that's the oil hole, uh, oil port right there. That's coolant, and this may or may not be oil. I think that's oil also. So oil in that oil outlet, coolant right here. And remember that other coolant that went to the top of the intake manifold, actually right over here, goes right there. There's your coolant port. And this is what it looks like. If you do this setup, you can actually take this right here, and lift the whole thing up, and it doesn't come apart. Now, one of the other guys in the shop here did 3D design, he designed a uh, bracket that will fit that'll bolt right here and um, so he 3, 3d printed his own bracket instead of doing the zip tie method but you're still going to put a need to put a zip tie around the front if i can get the file from him i'll put um i'll post the file and i'll put that in the uh, description so um hopefully he has that file hopefully it fits this one because like i said this one is slightly different than the older uh, the older models well, that's it. Thank you for watching. I'm going to try to do a video. I would really love to do a video on going back together because then I can actually go over um, a lot. There's a lot more information on the going back together procedure. It's, it's a lot more than just do the opposite of what you just did. There's uh, torque specs and there's other things to watch out for, especially when replacing gaskets, replacing seals. When you're cleaning that area right there, like I mentioned, you don't want to get any debris or water or brake cleaner or anything in any of those holes because then it's just going to be a bad day. Also, if you do an oil cooler seal job on this, I do recommend an oil change on it just in case something gets in there. You don't want to worry about it. So uh, make sure you get that oil change done if you're going to do that. So thank you for watching. Make sure you uh, hit subscribe and give me that thumbs, thumbs up. And then make sure you hit the notification icon so you get uh, notifications when I post a new video. And uh, thank you for watching. See you next time.